Okay, so this time I'm out of bounds, so uh, I can't die, but I can't also get inside. <laughs> Let's explore the great unknowns. <laughs> and funnily enough, FPS over here is lower than inside. Okay then. Hey everyone, welcome back for the second episode of Goblin Slayer, our intermediate Godot C-Sharp series. If you missed the last one, I'll put a link in the description down below, also a card over here on the top right. Well, before starting, I would like to address something someone asked me in Reddit. It was this. Someone asked me, well, can't I just update the FPS label inside the FPS? I mean, put a script over here and update it inside? And the answer is... Yes, of course you can. It would probably be better. It would probably be more modular because, yes, it's a bit weird for the main script to be doing this. But, you know, it doesn't matter as long as it fits your architecture, okay? So, with that being said, let's also address some things about Visual Studio Code that might not know. First of all, is this button over here. If you click it, you collapse folders in Explorer. I use it all the time because when you are exploring scripts, you can see that Visual Studio Code opens folders. And it might be helpful, it might be not, but I, I don't find it so much helpful, so sometimes I just collapse everything, okay? Also, yours might be different than mine. Your variables over here might be with uh, three references, two references. I don't like that because it takes a lot to load and distracts me. So to disable that, just press Ctrl, comma, your shortcut might be different, so if it is different, you go, go to File, Preferences, Settings, and type. Type Code Lens, click on C Sharp, and you see that mine is disabled. If you like it, leave disabled as me. If you like to have it, well, just leave enabled. With that being said, what are we going to cover in this video? We'll go through all the rest of the code in the write function in the main script. Also, we'll go through the, the write function in the map script. We'll talk about all these variables over here. We'll talk about export variables, read-only variables, those variables over here, and why are they here? Those variables and those variables. That'll be it for today, because otherwise the video might get too long, okay? So with that being said, let's go. All right, over here we have map, map, is, map, get node map. All right then, we have gone through, through that structure last time. So it's the same as just coming over here, and you can see that main has a map, uh, it's a node inside it, and we're just grabbing it. All right then, we're just grabbing it, and it's of type map because we have this script over here. If we hadn't, that would be just a white sort class. All right then, hero also has his own class, so we can invoke it. Hero, hero, map, get node, hero as hero. Well, why why did we, we had to go typing map here and not, not simply nothing at all? Well, because as you can see, hero is not a child of man, it's a <laughs> grandchild of man. So we need to, to access it directly via map, all right? As hero. You can see that over here, we put an as hero at the end. Why didn't we do just a hero over here instead of a as hero? Let's see what happens. Well, nothing happens. You know why? Because they are the same. <laughs> but seriously, those are two ways, two different ways to do casting. To, to say to C Sharp that, oh, well, you know that you just grabbed. I know you grabbed a node. You can see over here that it's the type he's grabbing, but it's not exactly a node, it's more specifically a hero, all right? It's better. All right then. So gen map, gen map, map dot generate gen map. All right then. So with that, I can see that generate gen map is a method of map. Let's press control and click over here. That's one advantage of using an ID. All right, but that's not so helpful, right? Because public gen map, get gen map, what it means? Well, this function, get gen map, will return a gen map type. But what's a gen map type? Let's discover. Well, gen map is a class over here in our script folder of the generators. All right then, but what does it do? Well, it has an enum, it has tile, array of tiles, array of map rooms. Well, it does a lot. So what can we do right now? Because it seems it was a bit of a rabbit hole to try to figure out what was the gen map over here. Because we click it here, click it here. And, and I mean, if we just try to understand it, I'm just pressing Control C, Control F and typing. We have 75 mentions to this underscore gen map over here in the map script. So, I mean, it, it seems daunting to discover what it does right now. So what, what can and what should you do 
when this happens, because this will happen a lot in your developer journey. You'll find methods that you don't quite understand them at first glance, and when you dig deeper, <laughs> you'll find yourself digging even deeper to understand what's going on. We'll do that, but not on this video. Right now, what you should do instead is just understand that treat it as a black box, where you put something and get something in return. And what are we putting here? Well, we are putting in JMap, our variable JMap, the generated map. It's probably the generated map, right? Because naming. So let's just think for a moment that we understand it. What are we doing with it? Well, map room, all right, it's also a, a construction of us in the generators. It seems also a bit strange right now, but okay, room. Is gen map get room zero? Hmm, it's the index room ID. All right then. So what it means for me, even not understanding the nitty gritty, we can understand that well. All that we are doing over here is getting the the generated map and getting the first room. All right, that seems simple enough. And what are we doing then? Well, hero dot position vector two is a new vector two room get x plus room get width over 2, comma, room get y plus room get height over 2. Well, many of the times that you see yada yada plus something over 2, that's what we are seeing here, yada yada plus something over 2, it's, it means centering, it means centering, centering to something. What am I saying over here, actually? I'm saying that we're just putting the hero position in the middle of this room, which room? Room 0. You get it? All right then. So I finally uh, arrive here. Hero dot position multiplied by eight. Let's just uncomment that. By the way, it was by commenting that that we spawn it out of bounds in the game. So this, to me, first of all, <laughs> with all due respect to Alpha, because we are just doing this series through his project, a marvelous project. But this line over here is bad code. Bad coding. Why is it bad coding though? Because do you know why we have a um, number eight over here? Yeah, needed why. So you should probably avoid in your coding hard coded numbers like this eight over here, this 30 over here, this 50 over here. Because I mean, when you type them, you understood what they were doing, but <laughs> someone else might see it. You might see it a few months later and all right then. What does it do? Well, he actually came to me and said it's just a conversion uh, to the units of the, the room to the actual units in Godot. Since the units of the room are like one eighth of the units in Godot, you must multiply it by eight in order to put it the, the hero actually in the center of the room. But it's bad coding. What you should do instead is have a variable for it. La 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 la, private int conversion position conversion equals, well, it's not an int because it has a map, it's a float, and, and, af, position conversion, position conversion. <laughs> we just had a type over here, right? Conversion, conversion, conversion. That in and of itself is much better. It's right? Yeah, it's right. Because when we come back a few months later, we'll see, oh, position conversion. Oh, all right, then it's just a conversion. We, we won't see a number, a random number over here, all right? With that being said, let's just review what we did here. So in the main function, we have this FPS that we covered in the last video. Then again, if you haven't seen it, go see it. And right now we just understand that to begin, to begin with, we are just getting the hero and putting it in the center of our game. This is actually what Brady is doing over here. All right then, very good. We understood one script of our game. Yay! <laughs> All right then. But with that being said, let's then go to the map script. The map script, well, the main script ha has 40 lines. Map script has a bit more, <laughs> almost 400, but that's okay. Line by line, method by method, we will understand everything. So let's begin with the ready function. What do we have here? Well, floor layer, get node, floor layer, a style map, shadow layer, na -na -na, a style map. All those lines are the same. And what are they doing? Well, pretty much the same we were doing before. Because over here, in the map scene itself, we have a lot of children. Floor layer, shadow layer, wall layer, decoration layer, door layer, and also the hero over here. What we are doing in this script over here is just actually getting them, getting them, get, getting a reference of them to manipulate them later. Because as you can see, let's take shadow layer, for example. They are used 12 times in this script only. So yeah, we're just grabbing it. All right then, easy enough. Path map, however, <laughs> is something else. Path map is one of those mysterious, for now, scripts with a lot of calculations. But honestly, they are probably just, when you see a lot of scripts like that with nested for loops going through X and Y, they are probably just 
um, calculating stuff for generation for map generation okay that that's a hint it might not be it but in this case it is so we are just getting creating a new path map what is false over here how the constructor gets a false all right consider diagonals no all right then all right then randomize the map randomize map <laughs> oh my god again a lot of methods a lot of stuff set from size etc but it's pretty much self-explanatory right because randomize map all right then we're just randomizing the map Without it, we might have the same map all over again. So that's it. That's quite simple, actually. The ready function just grabs a lot of stuff and just re generates a new map. Oh, but I didn't quite understand the path map or the get gen map, get room. That's okay. You understood the high level stuff. You understood why they are here. You don't have to understand the nitty gritty right now, okay? Remember that because it will help you in your journey. So, the last thing we'll cover in this video are those variables over here because there are a lot of them. Well, first of all, we have a lot of export variables. Private, because only this class can access it. Vector2, some of them, int, some of them, float, some of them. Room amount, room size, door margin, all right then, <laughs> oh my god. And all of them are exports. Well, what does export mean? It's a way to tell Godot that those variables, you can edit them in the inspector over here. Map, you see, room amount, room size, script variables, all of those are here. Are those uh, 6 to 17, 12 variables, they are over here. They are just a way for us to tweak our game without having to change a lot in the code. We can just come over here and, and say, no, let's just put the door margin to nine instead of three. Let's just put tw 20 banners instead of 10, all right? It's just a, a way of tweaking things. All right then, what about those? Private read-only, package scene, goblin scene. All right then, all right then, that, that's a lot. But bear with me and you understand it. Private, because only this class will access it, all right? Read-only, what's read-only? I confess that I, I myself hadn't read about it before this script, so I did some research. What I think it is, it's, and you might correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, please do, because we are all learning over here. Read-only is like of a final in other languages. What does it mean, actually? Read-only means we can instantiate it over here, but we can change goblin scene later. We, we might change something inside goblin scene, like X, whatever, but we can change it later. So why are we doing this? Well, I can think of two reasons, first of all, on the top of my mind. First of, first of them, security, because you can't accidentally break something. And second of them, and I might be wrong, but it might be faster. Because one of the advantages of using a language like C Sharp is that by making it very clear the type of variables, their, their variations, their metadata, you, you, you don't put that load on the, the compiler. You put that load on yourself. So with that being said, Goblin Scene is just a scene we are loading. And that's the full path of the scene. That's res. Everything goes with res. Scene, unity, goblin, goblin, scene. It's over here, by the way. Scene. Da, 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 da. Where is unity? Unity, unit. Goblin, goblin, scene. Over here. Right. That's just data of the scene. Right. We're just getting this packet scene. It's a type in Godot that is just a scene that you can load later to do something with that. The same with destructible scene. All right then, also with the generator. Generator, you see, we are not loading anything because it's not a scene. It's part of our of our scripts that are beyond the scenes. They are the brain of the game, part of the brain of the game. They don't have a visual counterpart. All right then, that was kind of difficult, but okay. Then we have tile map, floor layer, tile map, shadow layer. Uh, they are just tile maps. We saw them over here, remember? They'll just be randomly generated later. That's why we are getting all of them here. Path map, gen map. Godot collection array, body list, all right, then it's just going to be a list of body lists, all right, then a generic array, fine. And finally, those three variables, update timer, tile x, tile y. They're just going to be helper variables, helper, helper variables for later. You can see update timer is used over here in the process, is it four times, tile x is used six times through the script, same thing with tile y. All right then, so what did we do on this video? Well, we understood all the ready function in the main function, in the main script. <laughs> oh my God, I, I'm every, every time I'm saying main scripts instead of function. No, <laughs> oh, that I did it again. Main function instead of script. All right then, main script over here. We understood all the ready function in the map script and all those variables over here. In the next video, we'll talk about the hero script, the unit script, the goblin script, so we can understand everything that moves 
moves them and why are they different and why do they inherit from the same place. So we can finally start in the next next video talking about everything in the scene, like destructible style maps, animations, etc, etc, etc. So if you liked the video, give it a like down below and if you want more tutorials like these, a beginner series and everything else in between for Godot, Godot Sharp, game dev, game design and much much more, consider subscribing to the channel, okay? That's it for now and see you in the next one.